help when you're looking at an offense like Texas A&M. Yeah, they got the number one offense in the country, so we need uh, you know all the extra preparation helps. Uh, you know they do a great job, big offensive line, uh, physical in the run game, uh, great pass protectors, uh, three great running backs that they just roll through, um, and they all have you know dynamic ability. And then the receivers, I think seven receivers have games of 100 yards, and there's nine kids that have touchdowns on the season. And the quarterback's doing a great job distributing the ball, making good decisions, a very accurate thrower. And you can tell he's got some energy and some juice and you know good leadership ability. Do you okay. see many differences in the offense from last year to this year, despite the change of quarterback? Uh, it's, it's a similar offense. You can tell they've evolved in the run game. Um, but it, the kid does a great job anticipating the open receivers, uh, reading coverage, knowing where to go with the ball. And uh, he's got some talented weapons around him you know, to distribute the ball to. How does it, you know, when facing a team like this, the mental side of it? Because I know you'd love to shut out Texas A&M, but that doesn't happen very often. So how do you deal, you know, if you give up a couple quick touchdowns or something like that, how do you, do you play psychiatrist on the sideline? I mean, how does that well, if work you, for you? If you, I don't know if you guys watch us on the sidelines on game days, <laughs> but from the second they come off the sideline until the second they go back on the field, me and Shea and David Turner, we don't shut up. You know, we're constantly coaching them. Um, you know, I, last Saturday night in uh, Baton Rouge, I mean, it was every second, the entire time in the whole second half, just talking to them and reinforcing the message. So, you know, the big thing Saturday at noon is going to be the same thing, um, you know, making sure we're making adjustments, seeing what kind of new things they're throwing at us and making the right adjustments and making the right changes. Coach, on third down situations this year, you've gone to a three-man front a lot with Preston Smith in the middle there right. and Chris Jones and Ryan Brown. What makes that front so dangerous, and what makes Preston Smith so dangerous in that spot above the center? Right. You know, the big thing is just the guys that we have rotating through. You know, David Turner does a great job of keeping guys rolling throughout the game. Um, and we'll use different personnel packages on that, but for the most part, Preston is in the middle. And a lot of times, you know, they're going to either slide the protection to him or leave him one on one with the center. And uh, with the different blitz packages, you know, a lot of the blitzes we do end up getting Preston free. And he's such a dynamic player because um, usually offensive tackles are used to dealing with the dynamic playmakers off the edge. And once we move him inside, it adds a whole nother dimension for him. So, great Every, question. Everybody kind of talks about Bernard Rick and, and Matthew Wells. But right. You're really high on Beniquez Brown, too. Right. What, what have you seen from him this year moving into sure. the starting role every game and kind of, you know, becoming a staple on that defense? Yeah. Is that a good well, year? One of the big things about Beniquez is how intelligent he is. I mean, last Saturday night against LSU, it reminded me of the way Cam used to play. Calling out the formations, calling out the plays, you know, making checks, making adjustments, and it's taking some pressure off of Bernardrick too. Because Bernardrick now gets to go back to playing instead of just getting everybody lined up. And uh, just, just the maturity of Beniquez and the intelligence of Beniquez, along with his God-given ability. Um, I mean, he's 6'2", he's 238, he runs a 4'5", and add the mental part to it, makes us even better as a whole. We've seen Wales in coverage a lot with their <laughs> wide receivers and all the mismatches. Are we going to see a little bit of Wales in, in coverage in this game? I mean, we feel very confident. Matt and Zach Jackson, you know, they're both 4-3-5 kids. Um, just the nice thing about Matt is he's 6'3", 222 that runs a 4-3-5, you know. Um, but we feel confident with him on, on the matchups. Um, we do have different personnel groupings that we do every week. Um, but we feel confident with Matt on the perimeter too. 